Really? Hope you're all good. I hope you can hear me. I'm getting a new mic this week, so it'll be much better from next week. Um, so let's get started. So I'm just over here. <laughs> and uh, my shadow is going to do the practice with me. <laughs> Keep me company. He's very lonely here. Okay. I think I think we'll get started. And if anyone pops in late, then we can uh, I can let them in. So if you want to get yourself into a comfortable seated position and make sure your mat is in a safe spot, that if you take a trip or a tumble, you're not going to bash into anything and hurt yourself. Okay. So you only really need the room around the map, but just make sure that the area surrounding that is safe enough. And um, perhaps having something resembling a block, maybe a book or a water bottle or something beside you, and maybe even a belt. And that could be, you know, also a jumper <laughs> or uh, an actual belt. Um, so just improvise and make best out of what you have. Okay. And then when you guys are all ready, you can see people just, you're all on mute, but you can manually undo that if you have a question. Just be mindful that if you do ask me a question, everybody's going to see you asking the question. <laughs> I haven't figured out how to change that yet. So, okay, right. once we're all seated, possibly on a folded blanket or a pillow, have something like that to hand. And as usual, just get yourself into a comfortable seat, take any excess out behind you so your sit bones are directly on your seat, either in cross-legged position or one shin on front of the other. Okay. I really miss having my class here. <laughs> but we'll make do with our new normal. So just gather those shoulder blades onto our backs. Let your heart be light. And for the first few moments, I'd like us to do a little bit of heart holding um, for the times that we're in. So if you just take your right hand onto your heart and your left hand onto your belly, and if you are comfortable enough to do so, close your eyes, otherwise just a soft gaze into the middle distance. And just become aware of your breath, rhythm and pace of your breath. Notice if it's quite shallow. See if you can deepen it, consciously deepening and lengthening the breath. And see if you can Imagine drawing that breath down into the pit of your belly, allowing it to expand. Let your shoulders be soft and your skin on your face, around your jaw, around your eyes, be very, very soft. Just feeling the warmth of your hands against your body. Good, and then just see if you can take the in-breath for a count of four, whatever suits you for your count of four. I'm just gonna give you a guide. And pause at the top. And then a longer exhale, see if you can exhale for the count of eight, and then pause on the eye breath. Okay. So when you're ready, everybody take a big inhale in and exhale fully. And then inhaling slowly, one, two, three, four, hold. Exhale, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight. Again, inhale, two, three, and four, hold. Exhale, two, 
two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, all the way. Just like that. So just continue for the next few moments at whatever pace works in your body. And this kind of breathing is really helping us to relax a little bit, helping the parasympathetic system just kick in for a few moments before practice. And if you've got any active anxiety, anything that's really bothering you right now, feel safe enough to lean into that and exhale fully, knowing that you've got the support of your practice and you've got that innate strength and resilience inside of you. And just trust that. And again, inhaling, just momentarily leaning into any sensations of concern or anxiety. And as you exhale, be okay with those feelings. Be okay to continue to do whatever it is you have to do. We'll just take a couple more rounds like that. Allowing yourself to feel anchored to your seat. Connecting with the body, with the breath. And then last one, exhale fully. And then you can release those hands down onto your lap. <sighs> you guys are going to Shavasana right now, wouldn't it? <laughs> um, so tonight's practice is a beautiful heart opening practice. Um, and we get, we actually work into the heart meridian, into the lung meridians, the large intestines, particularly the lung area, opening up. Okay. And this really helps us tap into our inner strength, our, our resilience, um, and our innate self-reliance. And being conscious of that as we move through, we really do support ourselves, we draw into the midline, and we're not afraid to open up, and we're not afraid to shine out. Okay? So let's just open up around the neck and shoulders a little bit first. Just drop the chin down towards the chest, give a gorgeous stretch down the back of the neck, and then bring the right ear over to the right shoulder, let your shoulders be heavy. Feel that nice stretch down the side, the, the left side of the neck, the shoulder. And then just see if you can roll that left shoulder back a little bit. And then drop your chin down so you're facing downwards a little bit more. And then lift the chin there. And drop chin back to chest. Over to the second side, just as well. We're over two sides, we're going to get very confused with no one to tell me my difference between my right and my left. Let that right shoulder get heavy. Drop the chin down, look down. See if perhaps that I know some of you have a tendency to, <laughs> well, all of us have a tendency to roll our shoulders forward, tops of our arm bones, the heads of our arm bones, just drop, draw them back. Okay, and then exhale, chin to chest, inhale, lift the gaze, take your hands, clasp them behind your back, soft elbows, lifting, clasp hands up and away, smile, your collarbones open, big smile at the world. One more here. 
and then exhale, just take those hands around the front, you know the routine, round the back, clasped hands, round the back and drop the gaze in towards your belly. Inhale, bring those clasped hands up to the sky, turn the palms up and press out. Careful just not to squeeze up around the ears, create a little bit of space at the base of the neck and see if you can bring those arm bones back in line with the ears a little bit and try not to compete with yourself because nobody is watching you. Just draw the sides of the neck back. Just stop yourself from popping the head forward there. And then exhale, release. A oh, few rolls of the shoulders. Doesn't that feel good? <laughs> okay, and then just change the crossing of your legs. Good. This time, clasp with the other index finger on top. Take the clasp hands up and away from your back. Lift the chest. Hold your belly to support you. Exhale, fully and fill the pelvic floor, lifting away from the floor, hugging in on the inside, that internal hug. Two hmm. more. Okay, and then exhale, release that good work. Round the back, draw the navel in. That other index finger is on top here again. So round it in. Inhale, take those clasped hands up towards the sky. Turn the palms up towards the ceiling, press out. Then bring the arms back in line with the ears, sides of the neck back. Use your ujjayi breath. One more. And then exhale, release. Shrug those shoulders out. Okay. And uh, now we're going to come onto our knees. We're going to come into broken toe pose. So get some padding onto your knees if you need it. And roll the toes under and sit back on your heels. All right. Just take a few breaths here. It's going to be okay. <laughs> this is a this is a heavy number, but it's a really really good pose to open up the back of the body because we're working more on the front of the body today. But we need to create a little bit of balance there, and then working into the long meridian, which works up the outside edge of the arms. There, we're going to stretch here into the wrist. So just press the heels of the hands in front, turn the fingers backwards, and lean back. So that just takes a little bit of pressure off the feet there. Okay. Walk those hands out a little bit further if you want more. Feel that gorgeous opening in the front of the forearms. And that release. Big breath in through the nose. Exhale out through the mouth. Let's take another one here with lion breath, your tongue out this time. Big breath into your nose. And then. And again. And then. Good. Bring it back. Time to do some hero pose. It's inevitable when you're opening up the front of the body. So you probably, most of you that I know, will need a block or something under your bum. I'm going to need all the help I can get because I have to do the entire practice. <laughs> so take your knees about two inches apart max and bring your thumbs onto your calves. Just peel them out to the side and then just sitting down in between your lower legs. So for those of you who haven't been here for a while, just remember you're sitting in between your lower legs, okay, not on them, okay? And then just press the little toe, side edge of your toes down. Towards the floor, and you can feel that immediately opening up 
the front of the thighs. And if you've got knee pain, come up, you've got an option, you can come up higher or you can just commit to cross-legged position, okay? No pain, no pain in the knees particularly. Please mind your knees. Okay. And then something to do to pass the time. Hopefully you want the jumper or belt handy, something you can grab. I've got my belt. Um, I'm going to take my belt a little bit wider than um, shoulder distance apart, okay? So that I can just test and see how my shoulder flossing is. And I advise you to do the same, particularly if you're carrying a lot of stress on your shoulders. So bringing that belt down, inhale, lift it up. Exhale, and the high, just feel those pecs opening up as you do that, inhale. Lift it up nice and easy. Exhale and down towards the front. Inhale, lift it up. Exhale and towards the back. Inhale and up. That's it. Exhale and back. Now just be careful. Don't force anything here. If, you're, if your rotator cuff is a little bit tight on one side, be kind to yourself. There's plenty of warming up to do during this practice, don't worry. There's plenty of opening done, so don't force anything now before you're warm. Good, let's take, finish this one and take another three rounds. Inhale and up. Exhale and back. Inhale and up. Exhale and back. Inhale and up. Exhale and back. Inhale up, exhale back in the last round, and back. Good work, guys. I can see you, some of you on the screen there, working hard, good. And then just pop your belt to the side, and uh, you may need it later, so just um, have it handy. And then from here, you're going to come up off those poor little legs, those poor little knees, and you're going to come on to all fours. Take your knees hip distance apart, roll the toes under, and you can come down onto your elbows there, okay? Take your forearms shoulder distance apart, and then press the hands into the floor, lift the elbows up, and drop the heart down towards the floor. Bring the hips, keep the hips nice and high, but bring them energetically backwards towards your heels, drawing back in there. And feel the shoulder blades just drawing back onto your back as well. So your heart is offered to the earth. Just drop the head down in between your arms. Two more. And then inhale, walk those hands back on, in underneath your shoulders. Keep them shoulder distance apart. Your knees staying beneath your hips and your knees hip distance apart. Let's work through some cat cows, okay? Just for the spine. Taking an inhale, draw the chest through the shoulders, drop the belly and lift the sit bones up to the side. See if you can bring the sides of your neck back, your lower earlobes back and tone the belly. And then on an exhale, round in. Push the floor away. Inhale, back to your cow pose. Lift the chest. Exhale, round it in. Inhale, cow. Exhale, and cat. Inhale to cow. Exhale the cat. Inhale to cat. Exhale to cat. One more. Cow. And cat. Bring it back into neutral. Okay, from here, extend your right leg out behind you. And then turn the, or the sole of the foot onto the floor. So you're 
Right hip automatically starts to lift up towards the ceiling. And then kick your left ankle out behind you a little bit as a kickstand, okay? And then lift the right fingers, lift onto the right fingers, okay, right fingertips, okay? Feel the chest begin to spin skyward and then release the floor. Take that wide arm up and overhead. Okay, good. Maybe turn to look up. If you're wobbly, either kick that left ankle out to the back a little bit more or look down. Take your tailbone down towards the back. Feel the belly turn on. Feel the right of that hip flexor opening. Hand the hand faces down. Okay, here comes, here comes the fun bit. Take that right hand onto your hip and then lift the right foot to hover off the floor. Good. Then bend the knee, bring the knee in towards your chest. Reach down through your right foot with your hand and then bring that right knee back down again. So you're doing a quad stretch here. Okay, push the foot into the hand and pull the hand against the foot. Maybe curling back into a little back bend. Maybe. Keep lifting and curling and lifting and curling, tailbone down. One more. Exhale, release. Take it back to all fours and then sit back on your heels, child's pose. Rest the head down. Take two more breaths here. And then inhale, make your way back to all fours. Okay. And then you're going to take your right ankle and kick it out to the side, kick it out towards the right. Make your cup onto your left fingertips and extend the left leg out behind you. Okay? Spin the left foot onto the floor so the hips begin to open towards the ceiling and stack. Then lift the left arm up over your ear. Spin the chest up towards the sky, tailbone down towards the back, pull the belly in. Maybe turn to look up. If you're wobbly, look down, or kick that right ankle out behind you a bit more. Okay. Two more breaths here. And then exhale, take that left hand onto your left hip. Lift the left leg to hover. Good. Then bend the knee, bring the knee in towards the chest. See if you can reach down and grab a hold of the left ankle. Once you do, push the foot into the hand and lift the heart. Maybe curling into a bit of a back bend, taking the sides of the neck back. You may wobble a bit here, look down if you are wobbling. Keep pushing the foot into the hand. Good, two more. Yeah, you're gonna be shaking all over the place, that's totally fine. It, and exhale, release. Good, take it to a child's pose, take a breather. Sit back towards your heels. Good, just take two more rounds of breath there. Okay. And then make your way onto your belly, please, for locusts. So come lie all the way down. <clears throat> and then take your arms down by your sides and turn the palms of your hands down too. So your thumbs are on the outside. Press 10 toenails into the floor. If you have any more than 10 toenails, I'll be very worried about you. <laughs> okay, 
And then we're going to start looking downwards, okay? Draw your shoulder blades onto your back. See if your collarbones can rise up off the floor. Then lift the arms and the hands away from the floor, bringing the arm bones back up towards the feet. Then lift the sides of the neck back. Press the toenails into the floor. Don't lift them off the floor just yet. Come back to Ujjayi breath. Two more. Push the floor away as you breathe in. Exhale. One more inhale. And exhale. Good, and rest. Turn your face to the side. Okay. One more. Exhale about And let's do that and lift the legs as well. Okay, so turn to look downwards. Gather the shoulder blades onto the back, palms with the hands face down. Lift the heart and the head up off the floor, lift the arms. Then press across all 10 toes. You can spread the toes and lift the legs, keeping them straight up off the floor. Then draw in towards the midline there. Good. Push the floor away as you breathe in. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. One more inhale. And exhale. Relax. You can stack your arms under your head there and turn to face the opposite side. And then come back up. Last round. Legs and arms together in locust, palms of the hands facing down. Inhale, lift the heart, lift the head, lift the arms. Then spreading across the toes, lift the legs, keep them straight and knit in towards the midline. Feel the tailbone moving down towards your heels, belly engages. Then push the floor away as you breathe in. Exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale, and release. Good, take your arms under your face. Take two more breaths here. And again, exhale. All right, now from here, come on up onto your elbows for sphinx pose. Take your forearms shoulder distance apart and your elbows beneath your shoulders. Keep the feet as they are, just a couple of inches away from each other at the most, and the toes down. Inhale, draw the chest through the shoulders. Feel the tops of those arm bones moving back. Okay, good. Tailbone moves down towards the heels. Feel the belly turn on. And enjoy that gorgeous opening down the midline of the body there. Okay, and then turn your forearms out at a diagonal. Press your hands into the floor and lift the elbows up, keeping that engagement in the low body. Good work. Keep the shoulders down. Soften your gaze again. So we're opening up that whole area from the navel all the way up to the neck, all of that being the heart meridian. And then exhale, come on down, onto your elbows and cross your left elbow in front of you for support. Then bend your right leg. Okay, half frog, Vekasana, Ardha Vekasana. Take your right hand back and see if you can grab a hold of your foot. You've already done this on your side, on your knees earlier, so it shouldn't be too bad. 
then bring that foot in towards the outer hip, towards the floor here, not towards your bone, towards the floor, okay? If you cannot reach the foot, there's always the option of using a lasso that you may have there, something to grab a hold, and then bring that foot in and press the foot back against the hand. So you see my palm of my hand is facing up towards the sky, so I get this opening in my pec minor in the front of my chest there. You may be just pulling in like this. See if you can lift the right side of the chest up towards the ceiling. And then keep pushing the foot into the hand as you draw the foot towards the floor. Half cock. Two more. And then exhale and release. Take a couple of breaths. We'll do it on the second side. Okay. Pop yourself back up onto your elbows. Then bend the left leg and reach back to the foot. Okay? Then draw the foot in towards the floor, towards the outer hip. Yeah, and then push the foot back into the hand, spread the toenails. Lift that left arm bone away from the floor. Maybe a little bit more. Press the toes of that back foot back down into the floor. Good. Three more breaths here. Keep going. Ooh. Getting into those back bends, opening everything up. Everybody good. Yeah. All right, release. And then just take two or three breaths there. We're gonna try for bow pose. Bow, not boat, okay? Come to lie down. And then bend your knees. Reach back for your feet or your ankles. And bring your inner thighs together. Bring your inner thighs together, okay? Keep that. Take your tailbone down towards your knees or towards the back of the room you're in, yeah? See your belly pull off the floor a fraction. And then push your feet into your hands and use that to pick you up off the floor like this. Bring the sides of your neck back and keep lifting up. Push the floor away with your belly as you breathe in. And again. And then exhale and release. Stack your arms under your head and turn to face one side. And again. Exhale. I'm going to do that one more time, just for fun, okay? So just remember what your five-year-old self enjoyed doing. <laughs> and maybe your 35 or your 45 or your 55-year-old self. Just tune back into that. Okay, good. And then let's bend those knees, reach back to the feet or the ankles, lift it up. Keep drawing the inner thighs towards the midline, towards the strength in the very central line of the body. Use that to support you. And then exhale and release. Well done, everybody. And then we're gonna come back onto our knees. Good, just step your knees about two inches behind the hips. Roll your toes under and press back to downward facing dog. Neutral position to the spine. Just hang out here for a few moments, walk it out. Release the tightness in the low back. Yeah, just walking out your dog. Have a quick look at your hands, fingers spread. It's easy if you're practicing 
somewhere that you're not used to practicing in. So let the form go. So just be aware, be present to what you're doing in the physical body and protect and support yourself. So have the creases of the wrists parallel in front of the mat there. And um, you remember the Russian pump? But you enjoy doing that tonight. For those of you who haven't done the Russian pump before, you're in for a treat. <laughs> so you're going to take an inhale and then shift the weight forward over your shoulders, then drop the hips as you do. Lift the heart, smile the collarbones open. It's up straight to up dog, but my toes are staying rolled under. Lift the heart, lift the sides of the neck back. Take these arm bones back. Good. And then exhale, push into the feet, lift those hips up and back. A little bit faster this time. Inhale, drop the hips, lift the chest, lift the collarbones open. Exhale, and back to dog. Inhale, drop the hips, lift the heart. Exhale, and back. Inhale, lift. Exhale, and back. Inhale, last one. And back, well done. Okay, inhale, look forward of the hands. Bend your knees and step it forward to come and sit. Okay, we made it. <laughs> That's the end of the warm up. <laughs> okay, so from here, remember I was saying, not bow, not bow pose, bow pose. So this is bow pose, not bow pose, or bow pose, bow pose. So coming to sit back, bend your knees and hold on just to up beneath your knees there. Leaning back, lift the chest. And then see if you can come onto your tippy toes. If your back is sore for whatever reason, you can keep one leg on the floor, okay? I won't tell. And <laughs> lift those feet up to hover about parallel with your eyes. And then look at your big toes and see if you can spread your toes. A little more of a bend in the knees you can feel a little bit more supportive. Otherwise, rock and roll, feel the wiggle, feel the shake. Two more breaths. Good. One more breath. And then exhale, come up to sit. And we're going to take intense east pose or Parvatanasana. Take your hands behind you and turn your fingertips in to face towards your bum. Knees bent, lift the pelvis up off the floor. Good. See if you can take the arm bones back a little bit more and lift the chest up towards the sky. Keep the inner thighs rolling in as if you have a block between them. And then you can drop the head back if you want. But if your neck is sore, just keep moving forward. Lift the pelvis up off the floor. Good. And then exhale, come on down. Let's take both poses again. Just three breaths, it's not too much. Take your hands onto your chin, there, lean back with the heart, and then take it up. Spread across the toes. Two more. One more. And then exhale, release. Take those hands back and lift up. Pravottanasana. Maybe extend one leg out and hold it parallel with the floor. Spread across the toes as you do so and keep the pelvis lifted. Two. And three. Come on down. Take the hands onto the chin. This is the last one, so make it a good one. Lift the heart. Extend the legs up. Hold. Lift the heart. Two. One more, exhale and down. Hands behind you, lift the pelvis, lift the leg perhaps, and up, heart lift. Spread across the toes of that left foot. Don't let it roll out to the side. Keep the legs rolling in the inner thighs towards each other. Two, and one. You can sit down and cross your ankles and roll forward to downward facing dog. Good. Take three breaths here.
One more. Exhale. Inhale. Come on to your toes. Bend your knees. Look forward of your hands and walk your feet to your hands. Hands to the floor or to the shins and drop the head down. Just relax the head and neck. Soft knees. Perhaps take a clasp behind your back and lift those clasped hands up towards the sky. Let the skin on your face melt down towards the floor. And you can shake your head from side to side like this. <laughs> okay, good. Just releasing any tension in the face and jaw. Okay, exhale. Take those hands to your hips, elbows back. Lift the heart, press into the ground, and with soft knees, come up to down. Mountain pose. I hope you're all feeling okay. <sighs> Probably quite warm, but this is good. Do you need heat? Do you need tapas? To build that heat and opening in the body. Okay, for heart openers, so important. Okay, and then from here, walk your feet in together. And then you can take your hands onto your sacrum, which is that flat area there at the base of the spine. Bring the elbows back and feel your collarbones opening. Feel the chest opening. Keep the heart lifted, but mind you don't flare out those low ribs. So just make the low ribs down and feel the belly turn on as you move the tailbone down too. Keep that. Maybe bring the sides of the neck back a bit more and lean back. Using the jai breath. One more. And then exhale, root down into your feet, chin to the chest, and release. Come back up to mountain pose. Breath in through the nose, out through the mouth. All right, so from here, we're going to move through a series of vinyasas. We're going to call them ladder vinyasas, so we're going to just build onto them. And um, I'm keeping the vinyasas to the minimum, but if you want to skip a vinyasa, just go into downward facing dog or take a breather in child's pose. Okay? So we're starting here in mountain with our feet together, tailbone down, lengthen into the armpits, take the arm bones back, then inhale and lift her up. Hands together, exhale and fold forward. Uttanasana. Inhale, half lift. Exhale and fold. Inhale, bend the knees and step the right foot back behind you and bring the right knee down to the floor into a low lunge. Sink the hips. Now, if you have blocks or similar handy, you can use them to extend your arms down towards the floor and come up. Um, up more upright and then let the hips sink down. Keep the back toes pressing into the floor there. You can have those supports handy, but we're going to work on our back bends a little bit more once, once we get uh, into our, our spot. And if you're wobbly, just toe heel the left leg out to the left a fraction. Okay, good. Then from here, maybe clasp the hands behind your back. Take the tops of those arm bones back and then sink the hips. Let the collarbones open and take the lower ear lobes back. Sink it down. Big opening, right hip flexor just there. You can all feel that. Keep pressing into the toenails of the back foot and driving down into the heel of the front foot. Okay, one more here. And then exhale, take a release of those hands. Okay, and then from here, you can 
Stretch into the quad a little bit more by lifting the right foot up towards you, taking a hold, and bring that foot in. Press the foot back into the hands as you draw it in. If you're very wobbly, if you happen to toe heels, your left foot out to the side a bit more, bring it out there. Maybe a little Guillain Ludra with the left fingers, thumb to index, sink the hips. Big opening. Don't overdo it. Two more. One more. And then exhale, release that foot down. Take your hands down to the floor and we'll make your, our way through vinyasa. Step her back into plank. Lift the heart. Taking a, a nice, easy modification. First, drop the knees. Drop the hips, lay down on your belly. Press your toenails down to the floor. Inhale, curl up, cobra. And then exhale, roll the toes under, lift the knees, and push back, downward facing dog. Ooh. Two more here. One more. And out. Inhale, lift the right leg. Exhale, step it through to reach your hands. Bring the back knee to the floor and sink the hip. Okay, maybe take a hold of your blocks or your books and let the hips sink. Take those arms back. Lift the chest. Okay. If you don't have blocks, don't worry, you don't really need them. All right, from here, clasp the hands with the other index finger on top. Take the arm bones back, sink the hips. Be mindful of your lower ribs, knit them down, support yourself. Supporting yourself, drawing inward so that you can shine out. Two more. And one. Take your hands back. Then lift the hips a little bit. Toe heel the right foot out to the edge of your mat. And bend your back foot up to meet you. Okay. Then push your foot into your hands. Ooh, big opening on the left side. Let those hips sink. If you've been doing a lot of walking in the sun yesterday, you're going to feel this. High hip flexors. Or if you're sitting down in front of your computer a lot, you're really going to feel this. Two more. And then exhale, release that foot to the floor. Take the hips back. Take the hands to the floor, you're going to step it forward. So roll the toes of the back foot under and step forward. Uttanasana, hands to the floor or to the shins. Drop the head down. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, out hold. Inhale, root down, soft knees, rise up. Hands together, exhale into your heart. And then release your hands down by your sides. Big breath in through the nose and then out through the mouth. Let's move through again. Inhale, bring it up. Exhale, fold. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, and fold. Inhale, step the left foot back this time. Bring the back knee to the floor. Sink the hips, clasp the hands, whichever way, behind your back, let the hips sink, arm bones back, good, one more, exhale, release the hands onto your hips, roll the toes of the back foot under and then press into your back foot, lift up, crescent lunge, take the arms up, 
Tailbone down, feel the belly turn on. Sink down, front knee stacks over your ankle. Good. One more. Exhale, hands to the floor. Make your way through the vinyasa. Step that right foot back. Lift the heart to plank. Exhale, knees, hips, belly. Inhale, curl up to cobra. Exhale, roll the toes, lift the knees, press back downward, take some dog. Three breaths here. One more. And out. Inhale, lift the left leg to the sky, three legged dog. Exhale, step it through to meet your hands, bring your back knee down. Sink the hips. Then climb up, hands clasped with the other index, finger in front. Good, two more breaths here. One more. And then exhale, release the hands to the hips, roll the toes of the back foot under and lift the back knee up off the floor. Well done. Lift up through that inner thigh and press out through the back heel. Take the arms up. Big breath. Maybe a back bend as you take the tailbone down and lift the chest. One more. And you're stepping forward, Uttanasana, exhale, hands to the floor, right foot to meet left, boulder in. Inhale, half lift, exhale, and fold. Inhale, root down, soft knees, rise up to stand. Urdhva Hastasana, Samasthi, and release. Okay. And again, inhale, rise up. Exhale and fold. Inhale, half lift. Exhale and fold. Inhale, right foot steps back. Low lunge. Take the hips. Take your hands. One breath. Inhale. Exhale, release the hands. Roll the toes under. Press up, focus, good. Another inhale here, exhale, spin the back heel to the floor, warrior one legs. Lift the arms up to warrior one, good. Two hips facing forward, back toes at one o'clock. Good, sink down. One more. Exhale, clasp your hands again. Take the arm bones back. Then exhale, humble warrior. Fold forward on the inside of that left leg. Top of the head down towards the floor. Woo, three breaths here. Keep strongly engaged legs, driving down into that front heel. Keep knitting in that outer left thigh. One more. Exhale, inhale, root down, rise all the way up, good. Exhale, release the hands, vinyasa, step the left foot back, plank, inhale. Exhale, chaturanga, inhale, cobra or up dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Three breaths. And three. Okay, right side lifts. Three legged dog. Exhale, step it through to meet your hands. Bring your back knee to the floor, low lunge. Pass the hands, the other finger on top. Sink the hips. Oh. Are you still with me? <laughs> Exhale, take the hands onto the hips. Roll the toes under, lift up. 
press through that back heel and sink your hips. Maybe take a little back bend, tailbone down, lift the heart. Good. Exhale, spin the back heel to the floor. Take your hands and clasp them behind your back. With the other index finger on top, remember, warrior one. Two more. One more. Exhale, fold forward on the inside of that front leg. Take those clasped hands up and overhead. Press down into the heel of the front leg, front, front foot. Knit that outer right hip into the midline. Exhale, release the two hands to the floor and step forward to Uttanasana. Woo, exhale and fold in. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Move down to the floor and rise up all the way. Hands together, then exhale into the heart. Release your hands down by your sides. Let your heart settle. Mm. And just like the metal, uh, element of metal associated with the lung and the large intestine meridians, you feel so shiny and reflective right now in more ways than one. <laughs> so just enjoying that feeling. And allow your inner body to brighten. Okay, so we're going to do some king dancer pose. And I'm just going to start off with a little opener for it. So I'm going to turn to the side to do that. Standing in mountain pose. So find that anchored, rooted down, and grounded feet standing pose. And then from the earth, Draw right up into the center of the pelvis. Move down from the center of the pelvis, back into the earth. Tailbone down. Lengthen into the sides of the body. And then push into the left foot. Lift the right foot up. Grab a hold of the foot. Maybe get the second hand in there. Don't worry if you can get, can't get two hands. Okay. Once you get there, push the foot into the hand and lift it back up. Tailbone keeps moving down. And the arms and the foot lift away from the back. Keep pressing the foot into the back. Lift the heart. Try and keep your upper body upright. Tailbone down. Use your drishti to help you focus. And a wall if the balance is testing you today. Two more. And release. And that go. Oh, let's try the second side. Find your mountain. Draw in. Express down into the earth. Okay. Make the left leg light. Grab a hold. Take the other hand to the foot and find your drishti. Okay. Keep the inner thighs moving together. Yeah, initially, and then push the foot into the hand to bring that foot back up. Lift the heart, smile those collarbones open, sides of the neck back. Hold it. Two. And one. Whoop. Release. How did that go? How's the balance? <laughs> Good. Okay, so for this one, um, you've got an option of using a belt. 
okay? And if you have a belt like this, you can make a little loop in it. I'm gonna do it without, I'm just showing you before we do it. You can make a little loop in the bottom of your foot and lift the foot that way. Or if you don't have something that you can do that with, you can, if it's long enough, you can just lasso the foot. Otherwise, you can hold on to a wall. Really helpful. Okay, I may need it in a moment. <laughs> Find mountain. Find your drishti. Settle. And then lift the right foot. One hand this time. Okay? Push the foot into the hand and the hand into the foot. You want to keep the upper body as upright as possible. And lift and press the foot into the hand. Maybe take the left hand into the mudra in front of you. Keep pressing the toes in. Don't open the hips to the side. Keep the knee pointing down towards the floor. That's it. Two more. And then exhale and release. You fell down and you had to come back up again. That's totally fine. You needed a wall. Have it handy for the next side. Okay. Round down into the earth from the center of the pelvis. And then from the earth, draw right up into the center of that pelvis, into that place of stability, of grounded strength. And then make that left foot light. Lift the foot to the hand, press it into the hand, and then lift up. Keep that upper body lifting up. Keep the left knee drawing down. Good. Press into the hands. Bend the chest forward, not to the side. Two more. Two more. And then exhale and release. Good. Give it a little shake. Take your feet outer hip distance apart, get even wider, and turn your toes out and your heels in. Bend the knees. We're heading from the last one. So for those of you who like to have a wall or a block handy to sit on, have it there. Come on down and just squat. I quite like to sit on a block when I'm in a squat. And then take his arms on the insides of the thighs, the heart lifted. Tailbone drops down. Tailbone may not feel uh, as comfortable as it normally does dropping down like this because you're in a fold, virtual fold. So much more of an acute angle at the front of the body. So it's going to feel a little bit tight and that is okay. Okay. Three more breaths here, please. If the heels aren't coming to the floor, don't worry, we're coming to the floor now. We'll join you down there. And one, exhale and release. Good job. Okay, so will you find whatever it was you were sitting on at the beginning of the practice, perhaps a folded blanket or your jumper, and come and sit on that again. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So now, bend that left leg in and extend the right leg out in front of you. Get your seat, so pull any flesh out behind you. And lift up, sit nice and tall, okay? If you've got quite tight in the hamstrings, perhaps a little support under there, keep the knees soft. And then when you're ready, exhale and fold. You're not gonna come down into a very deep fold, because you've been just practicing hard opening back bends, okay? But just as a counter pose to the work we've been doing. And just allow your bones to be heavy. Let your breathing soften. Okay. 
and you'll find breath by breath, the back begins to release a little bit, and that's great. And just notice how your head feels after your practice. Notice how the body feels. Okay. And then inhale, walk those hands back in towards your body. All right, and then change sides. You may have to jiggle whatever it is you're sitting on around a bit to get comfy. But when you're ready, lift the lower ribs away from the pelvis and fold. Keeping a soft left knee here, no hyperextending. I know a few of you have, are very flexible in the knee joints, so just be aware of that and support that area, please. more here. And then inhale, bring it back in. All right. Release the two legs out of the floor. And if you have something to support you, we're going to come into a supported bridge pose, have it to hand. Lie down on your back with your knees bent, please. Lift the hips up, the blocker, your support under your sacrum, that's the flat area at the base of your spine, and sit back down until you feel supported by it. And walk your feet in until they're hip distance apart and parallel. Good, keep that and clasp the hands around the far side of the block. You can take the shoulder blades onto the back and lift onto the tops of the shoulders. Good. Now, because we've done a lot of back bending, you may find you can go a bit higher than you usually can. And that's good too. So it might feel really good in your body right now. So keep moving the tailbone down towards your heels. Keep the low back happy and the inner thighs energetically rolling down towards each other. The your Ujjayi breath. Let it just soothe you into a state of relaxation. And then release those hands, lift the pelvis up, remove the block and set yourself back down on the floor. Okay, keep the knees bent, take your arms above your head or into a goal post position or a cactus position and just let the two knees drop over to the left. Turn your gaze over towards the right. And then inhale, lift the knees up to center and exhale it and fall over to the, left, uh, to the right, turn your gaze to the left. And we're going to move slowly through this with our breath again, okay? Inhale it and fall, rise to center and exhale, fall to the left, turn your gaze. 
Inhale up to center, exhale, lift and fall to the right, turn your gaze, keep going like that. Take two more sets. Last one. Inhale to center. Exhale, just extend those legs out on the floor in front of you. And we're going to set up for Shavasana. So if you'd like to have something under your knees, go ahead and pop it in there. I'll give you a moment. But I want to do some breath work, just gentle meditative work before you go. So get comfortable. And once you're in position, just gather the shoulder blades gently onto your back. Toes rolled out, heels in, legs heavy. Closing your eyes and just again take your right hand onto your chest for a few moments and your left hand onto your belly. And just tune into your breath. And just notice how you're feeling after your practice. And returning back to the breath, you take an inhale for four and an exhale for eight. Can you take three rounds, please, in your own time? And again. And again. Good, and then you can just take your arms down by your sides. Let your whole body relax into Shavasana and let your breath be natural. And just being aware of that innate resilience and, and strength that you have inside of you, the ability to find that and find the courage to shine out to all those around you especially when times are challenging. So I'm gonna leave you in your Shavasana and stay there for as long as you like. And I'll see you next week. And thank you so much for coming. Namaste to you all. Sweet dreams.